an aurora shimmers in the night sky. And for a moment, a startling, seemingly alien realm becomes illuminated. This is the world of Serena, and despite appearances, these are not aliens, but the descendants of birds and fish. We've been following this saga for several videos, watching as, over the past 280 million years, an initial group of finches and other creatures left on a distant moon have evolved into a dizzying variety of forms. When we last checked in, this world had been flung into cataclysm, and the intelligent sea stewards had been transported away to another realm. Now, Serena is beginning to recover from the loss of its top species, although the greatest dangers and most extraordinary life forms still lie ahead. So, let's return to this world of birds, and remember to support creator Dylan Beta on Patreon using the links below. Our journey begins with the rising sun. Here in the northern Soglands, the morning rays illuminate a varied tapestry of life. Thorn grazers feed upon the sodden plant matter and unleash their bellowing calls. A predatory drake vulture scours for prey from above. The towering watchtower wumpos loom over the entire scene. These species represent some of the lineages that will come to prominence in this new era. We are now in the Hothouse Age and the lands of Serena have become splintered by the highest ever sea level. Though volcanism is on the decline and the end of this world looms ever closer, an atmosphere heavy in carbon dioxide means Serena has never been so warm or so conducive to radical experimentation. On the inland floodplains, a monstrous descendant of the burrowing birtle attempts to bring down a smaller hog lump while a foxtrotter watches from the branches. All three species have had to radically change their behavior in a short period to survive. On the ever-shifting coast, adaptability is even more essential. This tentacled shore scrounger and their chicks are just humble scavengers at present, but there's no telling what the future will bring. From the water emerges a sand lubber, a kind of semi-terrestrial snail. To the shore scroungers, it looks like breakfast. In the open sea, other snail descendants are enjoying a buffet of their own. The snaggletoothed Calicarna have become huge apex predators, and their preferred prey, the Escardines, are also a type of marine snail. The seas belong to the invertebrates now, and as the eons pass, the gastropod's grip upon the marine ecosystem will only tighten as larger and larger species arise in the post-Ice Age waters. Some, like the spike rays, will proliferate under the murky surface of freshwater rivers in astonishingly high numbers, their body plans converging upon that of modern ray species. Another dawn comes to this brave new world. On the northern coast of Serenostra, the body of a titanic shimmer shiner, currently the largest marine snail species, washes up on the sands. All manner of carnivores quickly descend upon this rare feast. There's no time to take turns. Eventually, night falls, and a very peculiar creature emerges to assess what remains of the carcass. It's a night creeper, another burrowing birdle descendant that's strictly nocturnal. The early bird might get the biggest portion, but the night creeper has carved out a niche for itself, snatching up midnight leftovers. Of course, not everyone has to stress about sticking to the shadows. The omnivorous Scoplin, descendants of the otter-like Skurok birds, have arrived upon a rather imposing body plan. The future of this lineage will be very bright indeed. More familiar dynasties flourish in one of the last relatively dry biomes on Serena, the Uplands. Here, members of the battering helmethead thorn grazer species clash over territory close to a herd of Jumpo Wumpos. A relative of the Watchtower Wumpos, they're far from the strangest trunked bird species in this era. In the southern jungles, for example, the speedy lumpalopes race through the underbrush, their facial flanges displaying bright colors to attract mates. 
In the polar basin, the peculiar shuck lumps have turned their trunks into a means of prying open shellfish for an easy meal. The shuck lumps appear non-threatening, but the lash lip carnacles, an emergent carnivorous trunk bird, appear anything but. And in this case, appearances aren't deceiving. The lash lips are ruthlessly effective hunters. The hothouse age can be ruthless, but it can also be a stage for unexpectedly touching moments. Here, a mother blowblump, the most rotund of the trunk birds, has taken in a rather confused foxtrotter, who has gained the scent of her young after spending time in their vicinity. Though its roaming instincts will eventually cause this foxtrotter to wander on, it is nice to be part of a family, if just for a day. Not long ago, Serena was a haven for this sort of cross-species cooperation. But the most intelligent and altruistic species have all since vanished, displaced to another world or rendered extinct by the calamity that capped off the previous era. Though deeply tragic, this loss has left behind an intriguing intelligence vacuum. Back on the coast, the shore scroungers have begun to diversify, with some new offshoots becoming increasingly social. It's a development to keep an eye on. As the hothouse age wears on, new forest ecosystems offer new ways of life. Here, a gravedigger subspecies sinks its teeth into a hapless thorn grazer. You wouldn't know it by glancing at the predator, but its distant relatives, the thalassic gravediggers, were once the most intelligent species on Serena. Elsewhere in the forest, however, a different subspecies is following more closely in the thalassic gravedigger's footsteps. This is a spire pyre, a primitive tool user who feeds on honey ants. They're a reasonably brainy bird, although not half as clever as their thalassic relatives. Another species with a remarkable ancestry is the screehonk. These long-necked herbivores are members of the giraffe owl, an emerging clade that, like earth giraffes, browse on vegetation that most grazers simply can't reach. But where did such an unusual clade emerge from? They're actually the distant descendants of the seraphs, who once reigned supreme in Serena's skies. One small surviving lineage, the fallen angels, found a niche scavenging on the ground, becoming increasingly well adapted for terrestrial locomotion. From this initial giraffe owl body plan, a wide variety of unusual offshoots have emerged, and over the next several million years, this group will only become stranger. But for now, the giraffe owl have competition in the hothouse forests from the spiral siren horns, a type of thorn grazer with an elaborate nasal structure that produces eerie musical calls. These pack animals have reached impressive sizes, converging on a niche similar to modern bison. Yet both the siren horns and the giraffe owl need to keep an eye on a new upstart. Sog gobblers are huge, aggressive creatures related to the scoblins that seem poised to follow in the titanic footsteps of Earth's sauropods. And while the sog gobblers are herbivores, the related skogers have a taste for meat as well as veggies. At three and a half meters, or 12 feet tall, the only thing more formidable than their monstrous size is their monstrous appetite. A group of skoger can strip a small island of vegetation in just a few weeks, before crossing the water to do the same to another landmass. One might assume that nothing could rival their destructive power. But in the southern bogs, an even more ravenous force is waiting. This trunked bird is about to fall prey to the insatiable bog shoggoth a superorganism made up of thousands of cooperating ants. Bog Shoggoths are the ultimate scavengers, though slightly less aggressive than their Ice Age ancestors, the Sea Shoggoths. The fact that such a deadly lineage has endured into the Hothouse era could spell trouble for the age to come. It's a good time to be up in the branches. The forest canopy is now home to not just bird descendants, but snail descendants as well. The peculiar tree gups are derived from marine snails that became amphibious during the start of the hothouse, and are now well adapted for a wooded environment. Once, the woods of Serena were tended to by the antlers, 
one of the first intelligent tool users who tragically faded from history long ago. Though their allies, the Gravediggers, preserved their memory for a time, the Gravediggers have now also disappeared from Serena's surface. But while these antlers are long extinct, one lone relative, the Survivors, have endured into the middle hothouse. And as a changing climate turns marshland to savanna, the antlers have an incredible opportunity to adapt. We now return to the image of the aurora-lit swampland. This scene takes place in Serena's warm southern pole, where for several months the sun does not rise. And in the darkness, evolution has sired creatures never before seen. Shimmering bioluminescence, a rare sight in terrestrial organisms, lights up sections of the polar forest. On the forest floor, a digdag, another burrowing birdle descendant, scrounges for a meal. Close to this badger-sized lifeform is a fan club of smaller flyers, who are hopeful the digdag will uncover something they can steal. But all smaller lifeforms need to tread carefully, for the uncanny spook hides in the Shroud of Night. A member of the bat-like lineage of Tribats, the spook's large ears form a dish-like structure that allows them to hone in on the slightest sound. Yet spooks are not the canniest hunters in the long dark swamp. Something very special has emerged in this darkness, a new tool user. Squab goblins are relatives of the shore scroungers that have put their tentacles to work crafting rudimentary spears. This, combined with their ability to hunt in packs, have made these tiny terrors formidable indeed. Though the squab goblins currently lack the true spark of sapience, there is enough kindling here to one day, hopefully, reignite the lost fire of advanced intelligence. And observing the squab goblins is another bright-eyed bird species. Bogglebirds are clever omnivores who have learned to act as watchdogs for the squab goblins in exchange for food. Perhaps they too will carry the torch of intelligence onwards. For now, day is breaking at last after many months of darkness, and with the light come the Dawnwalkers, large bipedal herbivores that hibernate during the winter only to reawaken when the sun and the greenery returns. And they aren't the only giants who return with the sun. Huge giraffe owl called crown-crested skybreakers descend upon the forest, coming home following their long migration north for the duration of the winter. During the height of summer, the southern swamp becomes almost unrecognizable as biodiversity increases. One rather unassuming species, the aquatic river carver, acts as steward of this biodiversity. Like earth beavers, river carvers are ecosystem engineers, damming and shifting the flow of fresh water to create an optimal environment in which to raise their young. A parent must do what they can, for it's a dangerous world out there. Some of the largest birds ever seen on Serena now prowl the northern continent. Descendants of the saw gobblers, the cygnosaurs might technically be herbivores, but they're hardly strict vegetarians. These aggressive creatures will happily supplement their diet with small animal life should the need arise, including chicks of their own species. Though this tree will keep these hatchlings safe, with the rise of cygnosaurs, survival on Serena is now far more challenging. It's a good time to have allies. The superb squaboon are relatives of the long dark squab goblins that have learned to cooperate in packs and craft simple tools. And they're not the only crafty tentacle bird on the block. The unusual boomer squaboon also operates in clans, and have learned to build traps to catch fish, although the primary function of their strange tentacles is to amplify their mating call like a megaphone. Next to these species, the blood-breasted squaboon doesn't seem to have much going for it beyond an unusual hue. Yet out of all the squaboons, they are the ones with the grandest destiny. For now, the end of the hothouse is looming ever closer. Yet before this era comes to a close, a final spectacular environment will emerge. We are now 290 million years into the Serena experiment, and though tectonic shifts have slowed to a crawl, new mountains rise against the distant sky. 
These sky islands are actually vast terrestrial reefs formed from layers of spire trees, and they serve as a stage for remarkable new evolutionary dramas. Gliding between the cliffs is a superb sky serpent, a type of limbless skurok. These hunters can soar for short distances by catching air underneath their parachute-like bodies, much like the draco lizards here on Earth. Other snake-like predators have a different tactic for getting the drop on prey. Cliff strike worms lurk in the crevices of the sky islands, lashing out with their curved mandibles to ensnare anything unlucky enough to be caught unaware. But the crags of sky islands don't just hide predators, they also conceal prey. Here, an herbivorous Staribara takes shelter from the long posterior limb of a sky heel. A bite from the Staribara's beak might be enough to dissuade the sky heel from digging deeper into its domain, although in the game of life, these two species are well matched. The Sky Islands are just one of the many new fields of competition in the late hothouse. In the Arctic, a northern equivalent to the Long Dark Swamp has emerged in the form of the Night Forest. This massive vertical ecosystem is home to trees so tall that the branches feel like an entirely separate world from the forest floor. Over 100 meters, or 350 feet off the ground, a red rasp rests in the branches. Though their hooked tongue appears fearsome, the rasp primarily feeds on insect larvae that they dig from the bark of trees. A world away on the forest floor, the baffling prismuffalope also enjoys the occasional insect snack. A descendant of the battering helmet heads, prismuffalopes sport highly unusual head crests both to impress mates and scare off rivals. At the very edge of the night forest, a tiny equine-like relative of the prismuffalope, the equinox, is about to be preyed upon by the ruffled rasp, a relative of the red rasp. It's a tricky task for such a small predator, but these unusual times call for risky behavior. For the late hothouse is an era of uncertainty. In the oceans, life is increasingly pushed to the coast as the global climate wreaks havoc on deep water environments. The result is a shallow water ecosystem of extreme competition and extreme life forms. One of the most unusual are the wandering wellicans, new arrivals on the aquatic scene that, despite appearances, are actually the descendants of tentacled shore scroungers that took to the sea. Like earth whales, wellicans have evolved to filter feed and have radiated out into a number of unusual forms, including the striker wellican whose outer two tentacles have elongated into highly effective fish catchers. Yet as predators, the Wellicans pale in comparison to the colossal Creviathans, the single largest hunters ever to exist on Serena. Exceeding 52 feet or 16 meters in length and weighing up to 40 tons, these giants are, amazingly, yet another descendant of marine slugs. Though the end of this world creeps ever closer, Serena has entered an age of giants, where predator and prey clash like never before. In the Southern Pole, a giant dawnwalker tries to frighten off a sleek fangwar. Fangwars are capable hunters, but this one isn't fully grown yet, and might be in over its head given the size of its quarry. In the Sky Islands, a far smaller drama unfolds between a painted jackalope and a long-toothed goat sucker. Neither species weighs more than 2 kilograms, or 4 pounds, but their will to survive is no less fierce than the largest of Serena's animals. And speaking of, on the northern continent, certain cygnosaurs are now among the largest animals ever to walk on Serena, but with exceptional prey comes exceptional predators. Subjugators are a relatively new guild of megafaunal bipedal tributhares large enough to pose a threat to juvenile cygnosaurs. Skirmishes between these two groups are often awe-inspiring, a clash of titans not seen since the Mesozoic of Earth. Relatives of the cygnosaurs, the regal Scolosi, also seem like something out of the age of dinosaurs. These huge skuroks might appear too large to be under threat of predation, but the late hothouse is a time of monsters. The imperious river dragon is a leviathan large enough to drag Scalosi into the murky depths. 
When pondering such a beast, it's easy to think of nature as a constant escalation of violence. But nature has a silly side as well. Elsewhere on the northern continent, bowerbuck are a type of giraffe owl that work hard to construct colorful towers of vegetation to impress potential mates. This sort of behavior can attract predators as well, but such are the perils of love. Some love stories are wholly unique. Here, a male flutter fox is trying to court a large female moon beast. These two species aren't closely related, but the flutter fox doesn't seem deterred. It's a small reminder that the engine of nature will create sights one might never expect. Wandering spiderweeds are a type of carnivorous plant that have learned to move through a cycle of continuous leaf replacement. They aren't particularly quick, only able to move around 2 meters or 6 feet per year, but they're an intriguing species that has quietly evolved in the background of Serena. And on the subject of species that have evolved in the background, antlers have now diversified into numerous successful forms. Bulldozers are large omnivores with antlers powerful enough to stun predators and mating rivals. Other bulldozers have evolved hooked antlers designed for quick slashes. Though none of these antlers have continued to carry the torch of intelligence their woodcrafter cousins once bore, they are nonetheless capable lifeforms in their own right. Considering Serena's current biodiversity, it is difficult to imagine that the end is near. The northern polar basin, for example, has never been as rich with life as it is 290 million years post-establishment. But there are warning signs on the horizon that cannot be ignored. As volcanism continues to decline, Serena's magnetic field weakens, and with it, the atmosphere has started to thin allowing for increased harmful radiation to reach the planet's surface. The final chapter has come at last. As a mass extinction looms on the surface, it is time we briefly turn our attention to a hidden world below. For underneath the exterior of Serena is a network of chambers home to long-forgotten lineages that have had eons to adapt to the dark. Very little of the life within these caverns is currently known. But as the surface declines, an underground world might rise. Back on the surface, a group of squab goblins and boggle birds watch the setting sun. A cold snap has frozen the marsh solid. And though this dip in temperature will not last, it is a sign of more permanent changes to come. Will Serena's burgeoning intelligent life be able to adapt in time? Jumping forward a brief 5 million years beyond the end of the hothouse age, a family of flutter foxes watch a forest fire engulf their environment. Rain no longer extinguishes these brush fires as the atmosphere continues to weaken. The end is very close indeed. But here in Serena's twilight hours, sapience has returned at last. The blood-breasted squaboon of ages past has given rise to the sylvan spark a highly social species that is beginning to craft complex tools. And they're not the only tool-using tentacle bird. They share this world with the slaughter sprinters, descendants of squab goblins who have taken to the plains following the collapse of the long dark swamp ecosystem. And their boggle bird allies have achieved advanced intelligence as well, becoming the artistically inclined whisper wings. All three species have arisen in close proximity to each other, and their futures shall be deeply intertwined. But is it too little too late? With the age of giants coming to a crashing close and global temperatures dropping, it is unclear what hope these new Sophants have. Serena has always been a story of hope and tragedy, of joy and sorrow. Whatever the future holds, life is always full of surprises. The final chapter of the end Ultima scene is still to come. But that's all I can give away for now. If you enjoyed this series as much as I do, once again there are links to Dylan Beta's Patreon and the Patreon of guest artist Trollman in the description. And by the way, as always, thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video and want to support the channel, consider liking, subscribing, and hitting the notification icon to stay up to date on all things curious. See you in the next video.